Welcome everybody to this week's Pilot Institute and Unmanned Tactical Group's UAS for Public Safety News Update. For this episode, we're going to talk about the FAA's brand new opinion and guidance for remote ID for public safety personnel. We're going to talk about the National Conference for State Legislature's policy on drone as first responder operations, specifically for beyond Vigilante site. And then we're also going to wrap this up with a little bit of a word of caution for all of the national disasters that we have going on all over the United States. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up finally with uh, some training opportunities and conferences that we have in the extremely near future. It's going to be a fun episode. We got a lot of really good information on this one. Let's dive in. First up, we're going to talk about the FAA's new opinion and guidance on public safety remote ID operations. Uh, come September 16th, we all know that Remote ID is going to be here to stay, so in the event that you are utilizing drones that are not RID compliance come this date, uh, that you're going you're gonna to need to come up with some way to either uh, find a broadcast module that you could purchase, even though those are uh, on back order right now. Uh, you may want to start looking at different alternatives and, and may need to upgrade your fleet to something that is already compliant. In the event that you're utilizing drones for drone as first responder, uh, for beyond visual line of sight operations, they're requiring that to be a standard remote ID broadcast, meaning it has to come from the drone and it's not a broadcast module. Uh, so that's important to note if you're going to be utilizing these systems that's straight from their opinion today. Uh, but this is something new that they just came out with that is of great importance for officer safety and things of that nature uh, for remote ID operations. They gave us some pathways to where we could... Uh, obtain a waiver to not broadcast remote ID information in the interest of safety. Uh, so I'm going to read through some of the authorizations that they said could be approved uh, in the event that you meet certain requirements, right? So first and foremost, they said below are some but not all scenarios in which request uh, to not broadcast remote IDs could be approved. First and foremost, operations in support of federal agencies, including uh, but not limited to homeland security, border protection, counter drug operations, and public resource uh, protection. Next is going to be covert air operations in support of covert ground-based law enforcement operations in which discovery by malicious actors could result in the injury to security and law enforcement personnel or civilians, or damage to property in the air or on the ground. Some examples of these operations include, but are not limited to, covert surveillance of illicit activities, which is, covers directed or targeted surveillance operations, including, but not limited to, gang investigations and operations, weapons or arms trafficking, investigations, operation, uh, investigations or operations, human trafficking investigations or operations, illicit use of public lands and investigations, poaching or land or marine wildlife, counter drug operations, including but not limited to narcotic operations, marijuana detection and eradication, and surveillance of clandestine illicit drug manufacturing labs. Tactical operations for the SWAT operators, uh, and then for, finally, and this is a really great one, operations to track and apprehend fugitives and fleeing suspects. Uh, so these are all of the things that the FAA has clearly defined as things that they could provide those authorizations for in the event that uh, you are flying for one of those operations. They also noted that the System Operations Support Center, or the SOC, uh, is still available to take any type of uh, authorization that you may be requesting as you are used to doing for Beyond Visual Line of Sight operations and any other type of uh, authorization you may need for an emergency event. Uh, so they're saying they'll, they'll also hear that for remote ID. And then they also recommended that you contact the UAS Support Center uh, for any other questions that you may have for remote ID operations. Uh, so th this is a huge opportunity for us to try to be safe uh, for any of those type of operations that we're doing because we don't want to broadcast our location as we're trying to track down uh, violent suspects and things of that nature, right? Uh, so make sure that you are uh, employing this in the event that you may be flying for any of those types of operations um, because this is something that you could do to try to make sure that you're uh, able to do that safely. It is important to note, though, uh, that in the early days of getting remote ID on board with the manufacturers that they are working with, they made it law that they could not turn this off. 
Uh, so while that there may be this opportunity for us to be able to shield our broadcast modules, um, any of the aircraft that you ha are currently utilizing that is already standard remote ID compliant, there is no way for them to legally turn that off right now. Uh, hopefully there will be a firmware push uh, here soon to where we could be able to do that, turn that on or turn that off. But what this also does is all of those aircraft that are not remote ID compliant, uh, where you would need a broadcast module, you have the opportunity to not utilize that broadcast module. Uh, so this is huge uh, for us, for public safety. This is big, big news. Uh, thank you, FAA, for working with us on this. Um, we are very, very appreciative of it in, in the interest of officer safety and, and uh, our citizens. Thank you so much. Next up, we're going to talk about the National Conference of State Legislatures Committee. Uh, they came out with a policy urging legislators uh, across the nation to start opening up pathways and the uh, uh, creating efficient pathways, excuse me, with the FAA to streamline beyond visual line of sight authorization so that drone as first responder programs can start being utilized all over the country. They stated uh, that the NC, uh, NCSL urges Congress to require the FAA, admin, the FAA to establish a regulatory pathway for certification or approval of beyond visual line of sight operations for unmanned aircraft systems for resp first responders to support DFR operations around the country. Um, this is huge for us because this is helping urge the FAA to open up the doors and the pathways, find effective means uh, to create these authorizations. Uh, as we know, uh, I was instrumental in helping Pearland Police Department get their fir the first and only currently uh, beyond visual line of sight authorization for drone as first responder operations. And that took a little over a year. Um, so that's not very effective and that's not very efficient for many public safety agencies to be able to utilize funding to stand up fully beyond visual line of sight operations for DFR programs when it takes that long, right? Uh, so. This is huge. Thank you so much, uh, NCSL, for uh, working with the with everybody in that committee to try to create these pathways for uh, the FAA to become more efficient on that. Uh, we're excited to see what comes from this uh, and start putting these waivers through in a little bit more effective manner. Finally, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the national disaster responses that public safety is utilizing across the country. Uh, Maui has had a very, very devastating fire. Uh, multiple fires going on over there on the island. Uh, they have had a lot of uh, UAS involvement going on, a lot of manned aviation involvement going on as well. We had the hurricane that hit Southern California uh, last week. We have a hurricane coming into, um, into Florida right now. Uh, so I just want to urge all of the viewers here today that in the event that you are in any of those areas or being called out to any of those areas, that you fully understand that there are a lot of public safety entities that are utilizing both manned and unmanned aircraft uh, to enhance and speed up the efficacy of this disaster response and recovery efforts. If there are what us in public safety call disaster tourists, um, where they're flying drones into these areas unauthorized, not paying attention to the DFR. Uh, while it may be good-hearted drone operations, it's prohibiting the ability for us to be able to go and do what we need to do so that we can get the data that we need to collect so that we can enhance the, re the recovery side of the house so that FEMA can start working with insurance companies so that they can start getting in there to start doing what they need to get the funding back to those people who uh, were unfortunately victims of these disasters. Um, so please, uh, if you're going to be in those disaster areas, try to coordinate with the public safety entities that are running those scenarios. Um, or those incidents so that you're not going to interfere with any of those operations. It's very important to note that in the event that you are still going to go and fly and in the event that you are found to have been interfering with those operations, whether it is uh, UAS driven or manned aviation driven or, in, or even ground driven, uh, that you could face criminal charges with interfering with those public duties. Uh, so. In the event that you are going to be in those areas and you have a drone, you want to put the drone in the air, please, please, please be very cognizant of some of the other uh, aviation assets that are already going to be uh, utilized for those. 
and try to coordinate with those public safety teams to make sure that you're not going to interfere with their operations. Uh, we would be greatly appreciative. Some of those agencies may not even have aviation assets. So it may be great if you were to go and make contact with them and then just provide some of your services and offer those up so that you may be able to enhance their operations. Uh, so think about that whenever y'all are going to be in any of those disaster ridden areas or responding to try to support some of those disaster ridden areas. There are typically a lot of, of aviation assets being utilized for those already. Uh, so please be careful with that and please please uh, be cognizant of the TFRs that are in place and respect those. Uh, thank you so much on that one. We would, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and Godspeed to all of the different public safety entities that are out there supporting uh, any of those disaster areas. Please stay safe and uh, fly safe. Last but not least, we're going to wrap this up with all of the different conferences that we have coming up. Next week, we have Com UAV Pilot Institute will be out there. We got a, a few instructors out there uh, from Unmanned Tactical Group that's also going to be at Commercial UAV. Specifically, Matt Rowland is going to be speaking at, on the panel at Commercial UAV for the Dronus First Responder Operations. Uh, we also have Brian Leventhal speaking on a couple of different panels. Uh, so get out there at, if you're going to be in Las Vegas for commercial UAV. Make sure that you attend some uh, the drone excuse me the drone responders uh, track that they have for all of the different UAS operations that are available and seminars that they have. Uh, we got some great topics that they're going to be discussing out there. Uh, so definitely come and see us. We also have the Law Enforcement Drone Association Conference in Bend coming up in late September. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to book those tickets, please do so ASAP. That is filling up very, very quickly, if not already. Uh, that's going to be a very hands-on, uh, scenario-driven conference with some great seminars as well. Unmanned Tactical Group will be out there uh, supporting some of those seminars and some of those trainings as well. Um, so some great opportunities for you coming up. Finally... Uh, we have some great training opportunities coming up in 2024. If you're interested in hosting some drone, uh, some drone classes, whether that's Part 107 operations or crash crime scene reconstruction, search and rescue operations, uh, we also have some hazmat classes as well and counter UAS classes. Don't hesitate to reach out for us. We're looking for host agencies for 2024. By hosting, you get a free seat uh, as well. So some incentive there for bringing us in. We would love to come and, and teach at your agency. Looking forward to hearing from you. We'll see you all on the next episode. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.